Hello there. This is Dr. Samurai, a professor in Japan specializing in international social pathology. And this is my diploma. Okay. In my minute lectures, I would like to discuss with you underlying mechanisms of some of the hottest issues in the world and in the United States, both from Western and Eastern perspectives. I am hoping you will share the same insight into today's problematic world so that you could lead your everyday life wisely with a sense of security. And today's topic is Black Lives Matter. Mike, Amado, Oscar, John, Alan, Chavis, Eric, Sean, Tim, Easel, Lamely, Dane, Philip, Patrick, Wendell, Victor, Kendrick, Kimane, Armand, Derek, Ausman, John, Johnny, Gus, Trayvon, George Floyd, and so many more precious persons. All these people could be living if they had not met the offices of dangerous narrow minds. In the end of 1960s, Malcolm X, Dr. King, and JFK were all killed and Black Nazis were orchestrated against the unchanged social realities after the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1964. What's happening today is essentially the same. Some say that structural anti-black racism. That's right. However, its roots comes from much, much deeper, from the very beginning of U.S. history. All nations have mythologies representing the nation's inner history and it is still influencing our realities today. White people think the land of America is what their pilgrim and frontier ancestors took from the indigenous and it is they who earn the independence from Britain. They clearly believe they are the owner of America and that they have due higher privileges from these vested interests, which other late comers do not deserve. This image of what America is permeated deeply into white people's mind and very difficult to remove. Also, in general, when people are under strong pressures 
and frustrations. They tend to become more authoritarian and exclusive to persist in such a crisis. One such good example is prison population, divided by racial lines and controlled by authorities. Likewise, at the ending stage of capitalism, we have been on the sense of entrapment, seeing global wildfires, global warming, ocean plastics, abnormal weather, and on and on. Slogan like America First reflects these shared anxieties. And now we are under huge stress by coronavirus, right? Thus, white people are trying to get away with this critical situation by being exclusive and authoritarian to others. This is what lies beneath the Black Lives Matter. In other words, this Black Lives Matter is a war, war between white people who believe in their vested privileges and black people who want to believe in multiracial America. That is, we are now at a historical crossroads into white America and multiracial America. You understand? Just as they fought for the Civil Rights Act of 1964, America once and for all must clearly decide which way to go at daily life levels. This confrontation of Black Lives Matter cannot be ignored nor avoided. Once the decision is officially announced nationwide, people know how they must act. Police officers are just a tip of this huge iceberg. They think their employer is then administrative regime, not the citizens who pay taxes. And nationalistic teachings are imprinted at their training school, which is colored in the employer's unspoken belief, as is clearly so in my country. That said, regardless of all possible reasons and history, no invasion into others is the most powerful iron rule which nobody, nobody can violate. Because if this is okay, anything goes. This rule applies no matter where or when. Suppose white people want to maintain their established privilege and ownership. 
once they invade into others that is wrong though America's history may have shown otherwise in the past also we have to be very careful about stereotyping about other races like Mids, Heather Heyer, and Charlottesville. We see so many white people who courageously stood up for this righteous cause of Black Lives Matter, risking their own positions in white society. We must remember this. These glorious exceptions are the true shining stars for our future human civilization. At the same time, there are black people who are ignoring and opposing the cause of their own race, protecting their self-centered privilege, privileged niche, and it is well known that such privileged minorities can be even more racial and discriminatory and hostile. In the end, how people act all comes down to each individual decision, not the racial lines nor skin color. What those police officers did to the black people who were crying for breathing are uh, not the duty but clear crime. The eyes who were murdering the, these black people were elated like those of hunters who are showing off their hunted games. This never is ideology, but simply pathology. One ex-national leader of white supremacy group, whom I know, agreed to this. He is proud of being white people, but at the same time, accept other races who have the same pride and guts. These criminals are against so many professional police officers of goodwill who can handle the situation without using forces. What we should never forget is because it is about who took the land first. This war is not only between white and black, but indeed it is between white and all the other late colors like brown, yellow, orange, and whatnot. As sociologist Jean Gabriel Tard pointed out, imitations goes down from higher to the lower. This means if the president's mind is biased, it affects its whole citizen without knowing it. 
as was seen in the demonstrations in Hong Kong, once demonstrators use violence and it becomes a riot, it legitimizes the government use of police and military power. It is also fully possible for the government to plant such violent seeds and also spies and a demonstrating group as is seen in, in some police states. Also, it is possible to psychologically manipulate the slogan of demonstration by putting up a new slogan like all lives matter all lives matter it is black people who are now disproportionately attacked and killed if they truly want to realize all lives matter focusing on the targeted section first must be their top priority. Don't you think so? The president's statement that white people are being killed too is the same. It is like boy A killed boy B. Okay? But A's mother blames B's mother that boy A was also punched a few times. It is nonsense. The president is the nation's father. Father must know his thinking affects his children's minds very much. In general, once compartmentalization is set for one group, dehumanization always follows, as in the case of lynches and Nazi Holocaust. Integration of all the races is the number one priority the United States as a nation has to resolve to function normally. Otherwise, people can never rest and live a peaceful life. Listen to this. There's a very famous saying in Japan. If you share, there's always surplus. Yet if, yet, if you compete and monopolize, there's always shortage. Do you understand that? This indicates selfishness never reaches satisfaction. Thus, happiness. However, altruism makes it possible for both of us to be satisfied and thus be happy. Selfish people will end up in endless paranoia and discontent, while Altruism is the only way that everybody can be happy. And this brings you to true peace of mind, outside and inside, which leads you to the deep spiritual joy that you can take with you over 
your death. True nationalist is literally the one who considers what the best for the whole nation without narrow sectionalism. Those who are obsessed not with inside but with outside features such as skin colors and ethnicities or on paranoia and obsessive compulsive personality disorder though they cover it tactfully by belonging to some group of radical strong title but they themselves now they are not like that deep inside what they are is just people of insecurity and anxiety accepting others over differences is more brave and courageous than excluding and annihilating others out of anxiety black lives matter is such a touchstone not only for america but also for the rest of the world thank you very much you have a wonderful day